Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace, a platform where you can design beautiful websites and host your online store. So as you can see, the moon is just about to set. And I've set up my 360 VR pano head, which uh, is a bit of a Frankenstein. I've kind of put it together myself from various parts, which I won't explain now because it's probably better to do it tomorrow from the Airbnb when I'm in the light and I can show you all the different parts. And I don't want to waste time explaining it now because I need to catch this quickly. But I'm going to try and create a 360 VR panorama. So I'm going to get cracking. It's going to take about 25 26 photos all together. So I'm gonna get moving before the moon sets. So this is what the image looked like in equirectangular format. In other words, a 2D flat rectangular image that's sort of stretched into a, a flat image, kind of like a world map is stretched into a, a rectangular format. But if you view this image through VR goggles or upload it to a 360 VR client like Facebook or Memento 360, you can view it as an interactive VR experience and look around the panorama in 3D space. You can check out my gallery of 360 VR panoramas over on my website, which is hosted by Squarespace, the sponsors of today's video. And this is one of the reasons that I love using Squarespace, because it's so easy to embed third-party plugins. So I have all of my 360 images hosted on Memento 360, which I can then super easily embed into my website just by copying the embed code and pasting it into a code box on the website builder. This is also great for embedding tweets or social media posts from other platforms and YouTube videos. Squarespace can also be used to host your galleries, which look great as the images don't get compressed, blog feeds, or even your online store where you can sell physical and digital goods and Squarespace handles all the payment processing for you. It's great. If you want to give Squarespace a go, head over to squarespace.com forward slash Alan to start your free trial. Start with one of their award-winning templates and customize it to your heart's content. And if you're happy with how it looks and how easy it is to use, use the code Alan at the checkout for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain with Squarespace. All right, so this is the makeshift 360 VR pano head that I've put together from various parts. So the thing with panoramas is that as you rotate your camera, there's a phenomenon known as parallax where objects in the foreground move quicker than objects in the background. And so between two images, things in the foreground become out of line. So, you know, a tree might have been blocking a distance tree when facing that way, but when you rotate your camera, all of a sudden you can kind of see the tree behind the other tree and things like that confuse panorama stitching software. So it's important to rotate your camera around the no parallax point. And that's what this device does. It basically rotates your camera in 3D space around a point such that there is no parallax. And that way, panorama stitching software has a much easier time. The first part is what's called a nodal rail. Um, this basically mounts to the bottom of the camera. Um, and that's usually pretty good for single row or two row panoramas to prevent a bit of parallax. If I just get my camera and I can show you. <sighs> so your camera essentially mounts to this rail. And then instead of mounting your camera sort of directly to your head, you can pull the camera back and rotate it around the no parallax point. And this works perfectly for single row panoramas, maybe even two row panoramas. And it helps a lot, especially with ultra wide angle lenses. But it only re revolves the camera in one axis around the nodal rail. In order to get two axis, you need uh, something like this. So, what I've basically got here is a large L plate, which is normally mounted to a camera so that you can mount your camera in portrait or landscape orientation. And then on the bottom, I have an indexing rotator. So this basically turns with clicks. 
So for example, I have it set to 36 degrees right now. Every 36 degrees, it clicks and stops. So that will get me 10 images rotating 360 degrees. And then on this side, I have another indexing rotator. This one's a little smaller. I wanted it to be a bit more compact than this one. And this one doesn't need to be as complicated because I only need to move up by like 30 degrees or 15 degrees. So I don't need all of the options that I do on this bottom one. And this has four settings. So 15 degrees, 30 degrees, 45 degrees and 90 degrees. You can set it to zero as well. So it rotates like a normal head. Um, but it's got four clicked stops. So I would then mount my camera to the nodal rail. You have to find the nodal point for your lens. It's normally sort of towards the front of the lens. I won't talk about that in this video, but you can sort of look up online about the nodal point or the, uh, the no parallax point. And then this gets mounted here. And now, whoop. and now I can rotate my camera in steps that way. And then once I've done one complete row, I can unlock this, move it up by 30 degrees, and then do another row. Now the issue with this, because it's such a small and compact design, normally VR heads are a lot bigger than this L plate, is that I can't point to the zenith, the point of the sky directly above my head, because you can see the camera, which is upside down, the camera hits the bottom of the device. Uh, so what I've been doing for the zenith is moving the camera forward and then pointing the camera straight up. So I've got a bit of clearance here. So technically for the zenith, the point of um, the sky, I've not used the no parallax point, but when you're looking up and you've got one row and then you've got the zenith, because there's only stars which are infinitely far away, let's say, uh, there's no parallax. So this is not gonna cause an issue with parallax. So it's a little, small compromise for having such a small and compact VR head. But I love the size and portability. It packs down so small in my bag. It's super lightweight, great for travel because normally 360 VR panel heads are quite big and cumbersome and heavy. But uh, this thing packs down nice and small. A nice, neat little solution. Um, probably not the best for big DSLRs and big lenses, but for mirrorless cameras with small lenses, um, yeah, it's pretty good. So how many photos does it take to capture a 360 VR panorama? Normally with panoramas, without using any extra equipment, I would aim for about a 40 to 50% overlap between images. But when using a VR head that produces no parallax, you can get away with just 15 to 20% overlap. I shoot practically all of my 360 panoramas with a 24mm lens on a full frame camera, and for that setup, the minimum amount of shots you need is one image for the zenith, or the zenith, which is the point of the sky directly above you, so you point your camera directly up. You need another image for the nadir, which is the ground below you, so you point your camera straight down and then you take two rows of 10 images one row with the camera tilted at plus 30 degrees from the horizon and another row with the camera tilted down minus 30 degrees from the horizon and all of those images are in portrait orientation so using a 24 millimeter lens you need a minimum of 22 images in total if I were to use a 14 millimeter lens on a full frame instead of the 24 millimeters, you could make that just two rows of eight portrait images. So now just 18 images in total. If you were to go for a slightly longer focal length, like a 35 millimeter lens on a full frame camera, you would need an image for the zenith, an image for the nadir, and then you need to do four rows of 15 images. One at plus 15, one at minus 15, 
one at plus 55 and one at minus 55 degrees, all from the horizon. And that's 62 images in total, which is a big difference from the 22 images you'd need with the 24 millimeter lens. So this is one of the one of the reasons that I prefer to shoot all of my panoramas at 24 millimeters. Once I've taken all the images, I stitch them in a program called PT GUI, which is pretty much the industry standard in 360 panoramas. Practically everyone I know who creates large panoramas and 360 panoramas uses PT GUI, but it does come at a fee. If PT GUI struggles to stitch a panorama, which it never really does if you're using a VR head, you can use the control points feature where you can select corresponding points on overlapping images to help the software understand where the images overlap better. This has saved so many of my panoramas which were impossible to stitch in Lightroom or Photoshop. As I already mentioned, I upload all of my 360 images either to Facebook or Memento 360. The latter allows me to embed them into my Squarespace website. So you can head on over to my website and check out my gallery of 360 VR panoramas. I appreciate I haven't got into much detail in this video, but hopefully it gives you a good oversight into 360 VR panoramas. But I do plan on creating a more in-depth premium tutorial in the near future, which goes into great detail about creating all kinds of astro panoramas, including 360 VR panoramas. So I'm kind of holding back a lot of information for that tutorial. But thanks for tuning in to another video. And if you're going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon, I wish you good luck and clear skies.